All right, I'd like to welcome you to RU Recovery's third talk. And this is where God talks to us through His Word being preached. And we want to welcome all those that are joining us on WBTB 107.9 and also our live streamers at gracecovery.com. And we are Erie's only emotional strongholds and addictions teaching live on radio and live streaming. And if you miss us, you can also find us on our YouTube channel, Erie RU Recovery Program. And if you like what you hear, you can subscribe. And I was just informed that we have 90 subscribers now for our YouTube channel, which is uh, thoroughly amazing. Um, I want to thank David for, Dave for uh, prompting me to do that. But tonight we're going to be, our text is going to be 1 John 2.4. 1 John 2.4. Give you a moment there to, to find that. 1 John chapter 2, verse 4. And we're in chapter 1 of the Nevertheless I Live textbook, and that is one way, one truth, one life wants to die. And we've been looking at the lies of society, um, and tonight we're going to be on the third lie of society. So let's look at 1 John here, chapter 2, verse 4. He says, He that saith, I know him, and keep not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the truth. Thank you for the word of God that tells it like it is. Father, we thank you for the word of God that uh, cuts to the quick. We thank you for the word of God that is sharper than any two-edged sword, and it divides asunder the soul and spirit and the marrow and the joints. Father, we just pray that you'd be with us tonight, that you'd cut through our philosophies, you cut through our thinking, that you cut through our way of doing things and show us the right path. And Father, then after we've been shown that we would live that right path, that we would implement those things into our lives that would have an effect on us, and that it would affect others because of us being affected with the Word of God. And Father, we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know about you, but this verse, I, I don't like being called a liar. I don't know about you. Do, you. do you like being called a liar? No. But I, I do lie, and so do you. And some of you may say, are you calling me a liar? Yes, I am. And by what authority? I'm calling you a liar by the, by the authority of the Word of God. You know, we say a lot of things flippantly and never check our words or actions with the foundation of truth, the Bible. We go along life's road living and doing all the while living as a liar. You say, there you go again, call me a liar. I'm not calling you a liar. The Word of God is. In my office is a sign that says, anyone living outside of the principles of the Bible is living a lie. And that's all of us at times. In 1 John 1, 1.6, it says, If we say we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. And that word say means to speak. You know, many of us will say that we have fellowship with Him, but then we walk in darkness. We're walking in ignorance. The word darkness here means ignorance respecting divine, divine things and human duties. And it's accompanying ungodliness and immorality. And in RU, we define darkness as a symbol of lack of spiritual direction. And so many are, are, are under, they can be under the preaching of the Word of God and they can still live in darkness. And when we walk this way, we're not in fellowship, or walking in agreement with the truth. Therefore, we lie because we do not the truth, as it says in 1 John 1, 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Many walk deceived, all the while others know their condition. Especially, 
a discerning leader, or one that is spirit-led and spirit-fed. We're fooling ourselves, but we're not fooling others. And we certainly are not fooling God. In Romans chapter 3, verse 4, we're going to be coming back to, to 1 John here, but in Romans chapter 3 and verse 4, the Bible says, God forbid, yea, let God be true and what? But every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and thou mightest overcome when thou art, art judged. You know, God knows the frailty of the human condition. How many of you, how many of you have ever been caught in a lie? I mean, like red-handed. I mean, caught. I mean, there's, there's no getting out of it. It's like, I've just been caught. I've been there more than once. Doesn't feel very good, does it? Let's go to Proverbs for a minute. Proverbs chapter 30. This is the uh, words of Agar. In Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 5 through 12, we're going to read. He says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found of what? A liar. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. And he tells us why. You need to understand that that colon there means it's a continued thought. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. Accuse not a servant unto his master, lest he curse thee and thou be found guilty. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. In verse 5 it says, every word. So it made me think, so we don't get to pick and choose what we think is right by, by this book. I don't, get to, I don't get to go through it here and go, yep, that's right. That don't apply to me. I might do that. Oh, yeah, that's true. We don't get to do that. Every word of God is pure. Every one of them. You know what? We were, we're all going to stand, stand guilty before him. Every single one of us. See, when we live life that way, when we approach life, life that way, it's relativism. You say, why are you so much on this? Because that's how we live life. We live everything relative to things. See, the Word of God is an absolute. It's absolute truth. If we live as though the Word of God is relative, then we will be found a liar. You understand that? We will be found a liar. We will not be living truth. We will not be, we will not be living according to this book. You know, this book that we, that we say we are so near, that's so near and dear to us. I hear a lot of Christians say, oh, I just love the Bible. Well, what, tell me what you read yesterday. Tell me what you meditated on yesterday. Tell me what your devotion was about. Tell me what the Lord showed you yesterday. In verse 6, in Proverbs here, he said, add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. And it reminded me of Deuteronomy chapter 12, when, when the Lord was, was uh, dealing with Israel. And he says in verse 32, he just got done giving them a whole list of things that, that, you know, that you're not supposed to eat, that you're supposed to eat, all these things. But he gets down to verse 32, and he says, what thing soever I command you, 
Observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Look at verse, verse 31 and verse 30. He says, Take heed to thyself, that thou be not snared by following them, after that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination for every abomination to the Lord which he hateth have they done under their, under their gods. For even their sons and their daughters have they burnt in the fire to their gods. God's telling them, you're not, you're not doing what the nations do. Don't, don't even ask about them. Don't even inquire about it. And he says in verse, verse 30, he says, Take heed to thyself, that thou be not, in, be not snared or entrapped. And, I, and I'm submitting to you tonight, don't be snared by the lies of society. And how do I do that? How do I not be snared? By living the truth of the Word of God instead of the lies of society. By by applying God's truth in your situations instead of unbiblical philosophies. And if we go back to Proverbs, he's because if you don't do that, you know what's going to happen? You're going to get reproved, and you're going to be found out a liar. And he goes on to say, Two things have I required of thee. Deny them not before I die. And he says, remove far from me vanity. You know what he's saying? Remove far from me emptiness of speech, worthlessness of conduct. That's what, that's, that's what that word means. Agar, Agar is, ask, is asking the Lord, remove from me vanity, remove from me emptiness of speech, and remove from, from me worthless conduct. And then he goes on to say, and lies, falsehoods, deceptive things. And he goes, and he goes on in verses 9 through 12. He says, Lest I be full and deny thee, and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of the Lord of my God in vain. But if you jump down to verse 11, he says, There is a generation that curseth their father, and doth not bless their mother. I think we're there. Verse 12. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. I think we're there too. Even in the church. Even among local New Testament believers. There is a generation... Oh, how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a, you know, I think we're there as well. And that brings us to our lie of society number three on page 34 in our, 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 our syllabus. Some claim to be Christian, but their lifestyle will show otherwise. Some claim to be Christian, but their lifestyle will show otherwise. In 1 John chapter, chapter 2 again, I told you we were coming back there. 1 John chapter 2, verse 4, he said, He that saith. You know, there's many, many that say, but not many that do. There's many that serve, but they serve man and are not serving God even in our church. Some serve to soothe the conscience, to be seen of men, but their conduct and their deportment of Christian values are lacking. They say they love, they say they're long-suffering, 
They say they have gentleness. They say they have faith. But they are critical of others. They use the word of God in a harsh manner to manipulate or shame people. Listen, the word of God will do that work on its own, right? The word of God can do that, do a sufficient work on its own. They're not gentle in their actions. What's gentleness here? Softness in manners. There are many that say, there are many that do things. Much saying, much activity, but not actions worthy to be called righteous. Why? Because it's done in self-righteousness. Because 1 John chapter 2, verse 4 says, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments. See, we may know his commandments, but are we doing his commandments? Let's go to Colossians chapter 1. Keep your place here. We're coming back to, to, this, to uh, 1 John again. But in Colossians 1.9. He says, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, be fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness giving thanks unto the Father which, ha which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us to the, into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even forgiveness of sins. He says, for this cause. I want you, do you know what the cause was? Look at verse 4. Well, look at verse 3. He says, We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ and of the love which ye have to all saints. All saints. Not just the ones that are right with God, but the ones that are maybe have erred. We still have to have love for them, right? But Paul said, For this cause... In verse 9, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. Their faith and their love caused Paul to pray for them. Because in, in verse 4, they heard of their love. They heard of their, their faith. They heard of their lifestyle. And why? Because, number one, others saw it. And number two... Others reported it to others. People talk. There was evidence of a lifestyle that was, that was, was Christianity working in the life or lives at Colossae. There was evidence. And I ask you, is there, is there evidence in your life of that working? Don't be found a liar. Let's look at Revelations chapter 3. This is, this is the uh, letters to the churches. Actually, we're going to back up into chapter 2 a little bit. Let's look at chapter 2, verse 12. And to the angel of the church of Pergamos write these things, which hath the sharp Sharp sword with two edges. What's verse 13 say? I know thy works. Now jump to verse 18. And unto the chain, angel of the church of Tytra write these things. Now let's jump down to verse 19. I know what? Thy works. Go to verse chapter 3 and verse number, number 1. 
And unto the angel of Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God. Jump down in the verse a little bit. I know thy works. Right? Let's go to verse 14. And then the angel of the church of Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Verse 15. I know thy works. See, God knows whether our works are wood, hay, and stubble, or if they're of gold and precious stones. He knows. Whether our works will be burned up or passed through the judgment. And in 1 John again, 1 John again, <clears throat> but what's here left? First John chapter 2. You know, we've been reading verse 4. It says, He that saith, I know him, and keep not his commandment, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But I, li I like the word but. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. See, it's possible to be found not a liar because of being found keeping his word and, and his word being perfected in us. And then also in verse 6 he says, And he saith, He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. That's the key. We're supposed to walk in him, in Jesus Christ. In, ver in, chat in verse 6 here, the word abideth means remain as one and not to become another or different. To remain as one. And that's, that would be re to remain as one with Christ. Because it says, he that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. The trouble is, we don't remain as one with him. And we end up becoming another or we walk differently. You see, you know, the prodigal son came back a different person, didn't he? Because of the things he touched and the things that touched him. In 1 John 2, 4, again, he said, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. See, the word liar, I didn't look up the word liar for you earlier on in the message, but the word liar means one who breaks faith. A false, faith, a, a false and faithless man. That's what makes him a liar. We become a liar when it comes to the Word of God, when we break faith with the Word of God. I just don't believe that. But that's what it says. And all, every one of us have been there. It's when we, we break faith or we... It's when we are become one that makes the truth not to operate in our lives. You see, as we when we are first born again, and as we grow in Christ, our faith should be increasing. Faith should be being perfected in us, maturing in us. Our walk with Christ should be deeper and sweeter. But I'm afraid as we go through struggles and trials that our faith is decreasing. And we will be found liars. I don't want to be found a liar. I don't. I want to be found faithful. I want to be found doing. And not my own power. Let this not be true of us, that we might be found a liar. 
Let us live truth. In 2 John chapter 1, verse 4, 2 John, chapter 1, verse 4. He says, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth as we received a commandment from the Father. Look at 3 John chapter 1, verse 3. For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. And verse 4 is a, a very dear verse to me. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. No greater joy. You know what's very joyful to me? I know of a situation that someone was dealing with, and you know what's really, really neat? To watch brothers and sisters in Christ work things out. That's, that's walking in truth. You understand that? That's what walking in truth is all about. It's not just saying the cliches and just throwing them out there. It's actually walking in truth. It's actually forgiving a brother when he really, honestly, from a human standpoint, doesn't deserve it. You forgive him anyways. Paul told one church, he says, anything you forgive, I forgive in Christ. He says, you might have forgiven, but I, I forgave him before I even got there because I forgave him in Christ long ago. I've had people come to me and apologize to me, apologize to me about things. I'm like, you know what? You were forgiven the, the moment you walked away from me. I have, a thing, I have a thing in my office also that says, let people, permit people, how does it go? Permit people to um, wrong you. Permit people to wrong you. In 30 years in ministry, I've been wronged. In 30 years of ministry, I've wronged some people. But if you permit people to wrong you, man, it's a wonderful place to be. It's wonderful. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Man, I love getting reports like that. Now that's a lifestyle I want to have as a legacy for the generation coming up. Pray that we live the life God has for us and not to our own understanding. Acknowledge truth, the Bible, every step you take so God can say, well done, my faithful child. And I give you this simple admonition. Just simple. Walk in truth so you or I won't be found living a lie or be liars. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Have every head bowed, never had closed. Maybe you're listening on live stream and say, I've been a Christian for a long time. And I hate to say it, I've been found a liar more often than I care to admit when it comes in light of the scriptures. Or maybe you say, I, I know the truth. But the truth is not always lived because I am full of anger and bitterness. I know, and the Lord knows, that those things are in my heart. And it comes out in my lifestyle. You need to come and pray about that. I'm going to have... My daughter, Aubrey, come and play the piano for us. We're going to have an altar call. Maybe you're, you're listening on live stream, and these questions have penetrated your heart. Maybe the message is, is something that you really needed to hear. It's time to do business with the Lord. I've, I've said often, 
If you're driving and you need to do some business with the Lord, pull over. This is more important than text messaging. It's more important than anything else. It's, it's important to do, do that business with the Lord. Maybe you're not saved. The Bible says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And I want to ask you to forgive us as, as Christians as we have failed to, to walk truth before you. That um, Don't judge it by every Christian. Judge the, the Christian life by, by the truth, by the scriptures. If you're not saved, maybe that's, that's your, uh, your need. And I'd ask you to, to, to write to us or email us. That, that's your need. We can correspond through email or we can meet in person and we can show you how you can know for sure you're going to heaven by the, what the truth of the Word of God says. It says, by this, uh, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. See, Jesus Christ secured that on the cross. And we're, we're talking about, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Father, we thank you for the evening. Father, I pray that you help us to not be found a liar. Pray you help us to be found living the truth. Father, I pray that you help us to believe what we read and implement it into our lives. Father, I pray that your name will be glorified and be lifted up. I pray that you give us strength to, to walk as the Lord Jesus walked. Give us strength to live day by day. Give us strength to go on in, in this difficult life. Father, I pray that you'd uh, be with us as we go from this place. You, you protect us. Father, we, th we thank you for the word of God that, that tells us the truth and shows us the truth. And Father, I pray that you'd help us to, to line up with the truth as we, as we ought to. And Father, we'll be careful to praise you. And we, we love you. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.